client, and this client has a diagnosis of Wernicke's aphasia. So this week, I'm going to talk a little bit about Broca's aphasia and Wernicke's aphasia. As you know, um, aphasia is a language disorder, and I have several videos on this topic if you go searching for those. It usually happens after a stroke or a head injury, and it can affect any aspect of language, which means your speech output what you understand other people saying, and your reading and your writing. It all has to do with language. This is interesting because even um, people who use a visual language, like a sign language, if they get aphasia, will no longer be able to sign. This is because you have centers in your brain that are your language centers. So I'm gonna talk about two types of aphasia. They're the most common that we see. One is Broca's aphasia, and one is Wernicke's aphasia. Broca's aphasia is considered non-fluent. They usually just have a few words that they say. Some people, it's very severe, and they can only say one word for everything, like two. Some people can get more words out that are varied, but it's a struggle. Now, with Broca's aphasia, you trying to get the words out. I have videos on how to cue someone with aphasia and that's kind of what you do in various levels um, given specific cues. Now with Broca's aphasia most of what they hear you say is understood. Of course there are different levels of this but their comprehension is pretty good. Wernicke's aphasia is kind of the opposite. So with Wernicke's aphasia it's called a fluent aphasia, where you're, you know, consistently saying over seven word utterances. Now, the interesting thing is that doesn't mean that it's speech that you understand. So, a lot of the time with Wernicke's aphasia, they speak in jargon or fake words or strings of real words that don't make any sense. So, they'll say, oh, down the way, God, I remember, I remember, and then, oh, with a woman and red, and, and they'll just, you won't even know what they're actually saying. Some people don't understand anything that they hear. Some people understand a little bit more, but there's a big deficit in comprehension. Now, as you can imagine, that would be very hard to work with. So, with Broca's aphasia, where you're, they understand, but you're trying to get the words out, you can cue someone to get the words out. You can give them strategies and clues to help them to communicate. With Wernicke's aphasia, where the comprehension is low, it's a whole different ballgame. You have to work on them understanding language to even get to them changing their speech output. So if you can imagine, if they don't understand you, they're not going to understand themselves. And as a reminder, aphasia is not a decrease in intelligence. All of that is still there, it's just the language. So someone with Wernicke's aphasia who's talking in, the, in this jargon isn't going to know that they're saying it wrong. So how do you help someone who doesn't know they're speaking incorrectly and doesn't understand you? You can imagine how frustrating that would be. If you're experiencing this with a family member, don't be surprised if they are very frustrated or angry or sad, whatever their emotion is. Well, you find a speech therapist to work with. So some things that I'm doing with my new client with Wernicke's aphasia, he has very limited comprehension, um, but is very fluent. We're doing something called visual action therapy, where you trace your hand and objects, and then you place the objects with the picture to know that the object is associated with something. So it's it's more visual understanding, and then you work up different levels. We're also working on using gestures, so I'm teaching him how to gesture to be able to communicate. Um, and then we're working on automatic phrases. So automatic phrases are usually a good place to start with most aphasias because the brain has them so well that it's easier for them to come out, and these, these are the ABCs and counting or uh, songs that they know really well, things like that. And then I'm also going to work with him on written understanding. So he seems to be able to read some single words. So that'll be really helpful, I think. Nobody 
should go without being able to communicate. Being able to communicate is a human right that we're all born with. If you know someone who has aphasia or for any reason has difficulty communicating, find a speech therapist in your town or get a hold of me and we'll find a way to help you out. Thank you so much. Please subscribe. I put out a video every week and I'll see you next time.